It says, which of the following statements about solutions to games is true? A says, at least one Nash Equilibria involves a player's secure strategy. Well, let's imagine a game, a three-prong game, where each player can make three different choices. A can choose left, center, or right. B can choose up, middle, or down. So for A, we go around and say, if B chooses up, I'm going to choose 6 over 4 and 3. If B chooses middle, I'm going to choose 8 over 0 and 2. And if B chooses down, I'm going to choose 9 over 4 and 0. For B, we go around to the top and say, if A chooses left, I'm going to choose 8 over 0 and 6. If A chooses center, I'm going to choose 6 over 2 and 4. And if A chooses right, if I'm B, I'm going to choose 6, which is better than 0 or 3. So we see that the solution of this game, the pure strategy Nash Equilibria, happens where B plays middle and A plays center. And option choice A said at least one Nash Equilibria involves a player's secure strategy. Well, let's define a secure strategy and see if, if in this game that's true. A secure strategy, remember, is the best worst, so or your highest minimum. You look at the strat, you look at each strategy's lowest payoff, and a secure strategy is picking the strategy that's whose lowest payoff is higher than all the other strategies. So let's take a look at A. A has three different strategies. He, he can choose left, center, or right. Well, left, he can either get four, zero, or four. So zero is the lowest payoff he can get if he chooses left. If he chooses center, he can get six, eight, or zero. Again, zero is the lowest payment he, payoff he can get if he chooses center. And then if he chooses right, he can get three, two, or nine. So two is the lowest payoff he can get if he chooses right. At that end, two is the highest minimum. So right is a secure strategy. That's how we define what a secure strategy is. Again, it's the best worst or highest minimum. For B, let's look at where his secure strategy is. Well, if B chooses up, he can either get eight, two, or zero. So zero is the minimum that he can get if he chooses up. And we see if we work this out that down is B secure strategy because again, the lowest he can get there is three. And if he chooses up or middle, the lowest he can get is zero. So we see that this, this Nash equilibria happens where in a, in a box where A plays center and B plays middle and neither of those are their secure strategy. So we can imagine a game where A is not true and therefore we can get rid of A. B says the first mover has an advantage in sequential games. Well, remember that a first mover has an advantage if the products are homogeneous, but a second mover actually has the advantage if the products are differentiated. So we can get rid of B. B is not true. C says if a strategy is both secure and part of a Nash equilibrium, it is dominant. So again, we're going to draw a game to help us organize our thoughts. We're going to go for A, we're going to go around and say if B chooses up, A would rather have three than zero. If B chooses down, A would rather have 10 than 9. If B chooses, or if A chooses left, B would rather have 8 over 6. And if A chooses right, B would rather have, well, he'd be indifferent between 3, so we can star both of them. We see that the Nash equilibria happens where B plays up and A plays right. There's two stars in one box. That's the pure strategy Nash equilibria. It says, C says, if a strategy is both secure and part of a Nash equilibrium, it is dominant. So let's take a look at if that necessarily is true. Well, we see that A playing right is their secure strategy because if A plays left, the lowest he can get is zero. If A plays right, the lowest he can get is three. So A playing right is a secure strategy. And it's also part of a Nash equilibrium because we see when A plays right, it indeed lands on a pure Nash equilibrium, two stars in one box. But is that strategy dominant? Well, no, it's not because we see a dominant strategy means it's better at every point than the other strategy. So a strongly dominant means it's definitely better at every point, and a weakly dominant mean, stra strategy means it's at least as good or better. Well, we see that A does not have a dominant strategy to play right because three is better than zero. So if B plays up, he will play right, but if B plays down, he would choose to play left. So again, a dominant strategy means I'm always going to play this strategy no matter what the other opponent's doing. And we see that C is false because we can imagine a scenario where we had a secure strategy and it was a Nash equilibrium, but it wasn't dominant because again, right was secure. 
So D says a weekly dominant strategy is always secure. Well, think about again what weekly dominant strategy means. Here we see B does have a weekly dominant strategy and it is secure because B is always gonna play up. There's two stars along B's route if you, if you look at his up option. Eight and three are what he could possibly get if he plays up and that's compared to six or three. So the definition of a weekly dominant strategy again is that his payments are at least as good if not better for that choice. Well, eight is definitely better than six and three is at least as good as three. So a strongly dominant strategy would have been eight and let's say five. Eight would be definitely better than six and then five would be definitely better than three. A weekly dominant is at least as good. And we see by definition, both a weekly dominant strategy and a strongly dominant strategy are always going to be secure strategies. But it's not the case that a secure strategy will always be weekly dominant or strongly dominant.